Everyone who plays ADVOU knows what Skarmory does and how obnoxiously good it is at doing what it does. Skarmory's big whole shtick is that it sets up spikes which damage all grounded foes and then um, it spreads toxic and then it roars everything out. Um, so the combination of spikes and toxic just do a billion chip damage to everything and then Skarmory is impossibly difficult to kill because it protects giving it extra leftovers recovery and it's immune to all of sand, spikes, and toxic so it's just constantly recovering HP every turn with leftovers and constantly able to get up multiple spikes and just annoy your team to hell, right? Um, Skarmory is going to be on almost, Skarmory is on the masked majority of the most consistent teams you'll see in ADV, and that makes it something that you always have to have a game plan versus, right? Your team absolutely cannot have no ways to deal with Skarmory. Um, like, um, if your team is weak to Skarmory, it's just going to spam spikes and then constantly roar you out and then you will never be able to kill it and it will just constantly chip down to where your team. Like Skarmory can- if your team has no Skarmory answers, it can legit just 1v6 you. Like it's really, really, really insane with just these four- no- it doesn't even have any like attacking moves in the traditional sense, right? Like, um, sometimes you'll see like Drill Peck over Toxic, that's- um, sometimes you'll see- a toxic and drill peck together. Like honestly, it's it, you'll you'll see four of these five moves: um, spikes, drill peck, toxic, war protect. Right? You'll see five of those. Um, and then you'll see this like tradition. This is the most traditional EV spread: 252 HP, max special defense, um, just to help you better stomach like neutral water moves, um, which are really important because uh, which I'll get into later. Um, but yeah, that's Skarmory. It just lives forever and roars you out. Um, and then spikes are really obnoxious to deal with, so there's multiple ways different team styles have of dealing with Skarmory. Um, there's, if you're running a very bulky team, or even like a balanced one, um, then you'll have a rapid spin. A rapid spin removes spikes from the field, and then that relieves pressure off your team, right? It means that you can just deal with Skarmory over time. Um, Another way of dealing with Skarmory for more offensive teams, specifically physical offense, because physical offense absolutely has to kill Skarmory because a lot of physical attackers like Gyarados, um, Salamence, right? Um, those guys suck at killing Skarmory. They they cannot do it. They cannot do it. They'll just get toxic and then roared out and they're just dead. They're, they can't do anything. So you need Magneton to trap Skarmory in. However, that doesn't necessarily get rid of the spike in the first place, but these teams play at a pace to where, um, at such a fast pace to where they can handle the one spike going up, right? Um... I'm trying not to say right as much because I know that's like annoying to some people, so sorry about that. Um, it's like, I'm trying to break that habit. Um, I almost said it again there. Oh gosh. Um, yeah, um, let's see. So there's um, having a very bulky team with rapid spin. Um, these bulky teams can afford to um, not necessarily break their scum immediately because they'll have recovery, right? Like Blissey has soft boiled, Milotic has recovered, Drachi has wish, things like that, right? Um, even if a Pokemon is worn down by all of Sand Spikes and Toxic, they can still be really difficult to kill as long as they have reliable recovery, um, whether that's Recover or Wish, or something of the sort. Um, so yeah, um, you can Rapid Spin and like have ways of healing off Spikes damage, and then there's Magneton to manually remove Skarmory. Um, however, there's some teams where you'll have a lot- there's some offensive teams where you'll have a lot of, um, grounded Pokemon, and those guys, even if they get- even if the Skarmory gets up one spike, that spike goes such a long way, because a lot of Pokemon like, uh, Tyranitar and Metagross really, really, really need to be at, uh, full HP or really high HP in order to take big hits, such as, uh, plus one Salamence Earthquakes or, uh, and stuff like that. Um, so... And another common situation that comes in is like, you know, Skarmory is really common, right? You and your opponent can both have a Skarmory. If, if you two are both wearing the standard Skarmory set, a common interaction that can happen is both Skarmories will just come in and trade, uh, trade all three layers of spikes, right? Because um, neither really wants to switch out and give up tempo. Right? Um, because if you switch out, then that means they get up a spike for free while you give up a spike, right? You don't, give, you don't, get, the, you don't get the spike and your opponent gets the spike and then you're just on the back foot. Um, you can bring in a Pokemon that counters Skarmory, like, I don't know, Moltres or like Zapdos, but odds are that they'll have a counter to that, especially if you're playing a very uh, defensive team, then oh, they just go Blissey on your Moltres or Zapdos, and then you just give up the spike to punish that Blissey, um, so it's really terrible. Um, and if you're playing an offensive team, then naturally you won't have the longevity, the, lux the luxury of longevity that a lot of these bulkier teams will have. Um, 
So that's where Taunt Skarmory comes in. Um, a common interaction that will happen, like I said, is lead T-Tar on T-Tar or like lead T-Tar on Salamence. Um, neither of those really, neither a Pokemon on either two of those lead situations wants to stay on each other. So odds are that they'll both go into their respective Skarmories. If you have the standard Skarmory, then you will just get up three layers of spikes versus the other and then roar the opposing Skarmory out and hope that you are faster because the faster roar will go first and then you'll drag something in and they'll get chunked by spikes really hard. That's why I really like a bit of extra speed on my standard Skarm so that my roar will go first. Um, but the really cool thing about Taunt Skarmory, right, is that um, because you have access to Taunts, you absolutely destroy the standard Skarmory, right? Even if they have Drill Peck, what is Drill Peck doing to Skarmory, you know? Um, then uh, they can't click spikes, they can't roar you out. So they're just doing nothing, and then they're forced to switch out, which not only prevents them from getting up a spike, but it gives you a free spike as well. So you you just have so much offensive momentum with just clicking taunts. Um, yeah, so you, you nullify their Skarmory from um, getting up spikes at all, and then you force them to reveal more Pokemon. Um, let's see, yeah. Taunt is also really, really amazing because it shuts down um, healing attempts from Pokemon like Blissey um, and Milotic. A common way, like Milotic's, mo the only moves that you should really see on Milotic uh, on bulky teams is Surf, Recover, Refresh, and Toxic. Um, and Milotic is really difficult to kill because it's really bulky and then, um, It'll just heal, it can heal off status, like Willow has been toxic with Refresh, and then it just it has recovered, so it's impossible to kill. Um, the standard Skarm can't really touch Milotic, because like what, it's gonna recover off Drill Pick and it's gonna refresh off Toxic. You can spike on it, sure, but then they just bring in Claydol and spin away your spikes, and like, what then? You know, like, you made no progress versus that. Like, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to make progress versus those really fat teams with, you, like, you can obviously have Pokemon like Gengar that can block spin, but it's harder to, like, brute force your way through those teams, right? With this get standard scar, like, you have to ha have a bit of finesse to it. You gotta punish the rapid spin attempts, you know? You gotta double on the, um, Milotic or the Blissey coming in. But this Skarmory just says, you know, like, screw these guys. Like, you just taunt the Milotic as it goes for recover on your Toxic, uh, or refresh on your Toxic, and then, like, all of a sudden, like, their, um, what is it? Their Surf does nothing to you because you're, you know, you're pretty decently specially defensive. You're pretty decent, um, you're pretty specially defensive. Not as much as standard, but you're still pretty good at that. So you can take multiple Surfs. And then you just get three spikes on them, and they, they just sit there doing nothing. Because, like, what, they're gonna Surf you for, like, 20, 30%, kinda, and then you heal with Leftovers, so it's basically doing nothing. Um, so yeah, taunt, uh, you run 96 speed uh, at minimum. This is the m absolute minimum you speed you have to run on Taunt Skarmory because this outspeeds zero speed Milotic. Um, there are, the thing with Taunt Skarmory is that because it outpaces other Skarmory, um, you want to go higher than 96 because obviously you don't want your Taunt Skarmory to be slower than opposing Taunt Skarmory, right? You want to be faster than opposing Taunt Skarmory. So then you can drop your speed, you can start your special bulk even lower. Um, let's see, what are the benchmarks? Um, I know Sassy Defensive Jirachi hits, um, Sassy Defensive Jirachi hits 212, so you could go 148. You could go this, um, 213, so you can taunt them on the wish attempt. I don't think this benchmark is, like, that significant because, um, I don't think this is that good because, what is it? Jirachi heals in sand with leftovers, so it's not really that great, but it's not bad. Um, you could go, let's see, I think past this point, I think you're better off running, uh, Timid Nature or Jolly, depending on if you run Drill Peck on this guy. Um, but let's see, you could go... Ooh, you could go 104 Timid. You could go 104 Timid here because this will outspeed Adamant uh, Tyranitar as well as uh, stuff like Max Speed, not um, as well as uh, Swampert. Let's see. Um, you can go up to here, uh, 241, uh, 242. Yeah, 242. This will outspeed um, uh, Timid Swampert with Endeavor and Substitute. That's, re that's this is a really good benchmark. And then you can also go all the way up to 244 here uh, for um, Jolly Dragon Dance Tyranitar. So you can just completely stop the Dragon Dance, which is really good. Um, but also you can just roar that guy out. So this is fine. I think I would either go a couple points faster than the 96 Milotic benchmark, or I would go um, 242 for Swampert here. I think these are the two benchmarks. 
Um, Taunt Skarmory has its issues because obviously you're running a ton of um, speed, right? So then you're not going to be able to take... Uh, Standard Skarmory can do a lot of insane things like eat a plus one modest Suicune Hydro Pump or a max special attack Zapdos Thunderbolt, which is r crazy to think about, right? But um, Skarmory is just so good at eating those hits. Um, Taunt Skarmory cannot exactly do that, so you have to be a bit more proactive in how you approach those um, Pokemon. Um, but you're mainly using this guy to get the jump on opposing Skarm, as well as stop healing attempts from Blissey, Milot My You shut down Milotic. This guy absolutely shuts down Milotic, but you can stop Soft Boiled from Blissey, because, like, what? Blissey takes damage from Spikes, Blissey takes damage from Sand, Blissey takes damage from Toxic. All you need now is to taunt it, and then it's cooked. Um, you have to be a bit careful about approaching Blissey, because, um... You have to be a bit, bit careful about Blissey because you can take Ice Beam and Seismic Toss decently well, but if they are running Thunderbolt or Fire Blast, the Skarmory hates taking those moves because you're not nearly as bulky. So you do have to be a bit cautious about that. But if you can time a taunt super well on Blissey, that just shuts it down and opens up your teammates so much more. Um, taunt Skarmory fits really well on offense because a lot of Pokemon, a lot of offensive Pokemon are stopped by um, Milotic, which I will get into, but Milotic is such a big progress blocker, and by using this Skarmory set specifically, you just open up those guys so much more. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, Claydol. Claydol's a popular rapid spinner, right? Um, sorry, sorry, I keep saying ice. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, uh, Claydol's a very popular rapid spinner because it's immune to sand and spikes, and then if it runs refresh, I don't think refresh Claydol is good, but you can see it, and then refresh Claydol absolutely shuts down this Skarmory set, unless you're running Drill Peck. Um, I mean, this Skarmory set um, with uh, Protect. Like, if you're running this uh, Skarmory set, then um, refresh Claydol absolutely destroys you, which is why a lot of people are leaning towards uh, Peck Toxic these days. Because, um, like, I mean, Kinda, not really, kinda. Like, this is a set you'll see, obviously, because it's just four out of the five moves. Um, but Peck is really good because it uh, deals with Fortress and it deals with Refresh Claydol, which are two Pokemon that can rapid spin in front of this Skarmory set. And then, um, if you don't have Drill Peck, then you can't touch them at all. And then they they just get to spin infinitely. Um, this Skarmory does things a bit differently because instead of using Peck to deal to whittle down um, Refresh Claydol, which you absolutely can use, I think Peck is really good. Um, like you can use Peck over like Toxic. It, it's Peck. Or, it's Peck or Toxic. Um, Toxic is better versus Milotic infinitely, but Peck is nice versus Fortress, which is understandable. Um, drill Peck, because Fortress is really annoying for this Skarmory. Um, let's see. But back to Toxic. Um, the cool thing with this is that with Toxic, then uh, with Taunt, then uh, with this much speed investment, you're obviously going to be faster than the vast majority of Clay Dolls. Some Clay Dolls go really fast, so it is worth sometimes um, investing into a lot of speed to handle those Clay Dolls. Um, but the idea is that you toxic the Claydol, and then because of your fast taunt, then you deny them from refreshing, and then their moves, best move into you is like what? Explosion, Shadow Ball, or Psychic. So then they can't really touch you. So taunt shuts that, toxic taunt shuts down Milotic and Claydol super well. And then in, I mean, to toxic taunt just shuts down Blissey, Milotic, um, and Claydol. And then with ta fast taunt, then you shut down other Skarms. Then th those four guys are super popular on very defensive teams, and then you'll see a combination of not all four, but you'll see two, three of those guys on a lot of other various team structures. So Taunt Skarmory just matches up super well into them. Um, and that's why it's good. It just it fits really well in offense teams because your offense wants not you, your offense wants spikes to not be up on your side because you don't want to be chipped down because your team is already kind of frail as it is. And then you want to be forcing progress versus those fat defensive Pokemon. Um, yeah, that's Taunt Skarmory. Really, really, really cool, amazing set. Um, yeah. And then teammates in general, you always want to, you almost always want to pair this guy with Tyranitar because you you really want Sand Up to really um, nail down on the Blissey and Milotic matchup. Uh, because obviously, if Sand is not up, then they're recovering with leftovers, so your Taunt and Toxic are slightly less impactful. Um, yeah. Aerodactyl. Um, oh, Tyranitar also cannot break through um, Claydol or. Uh, Milotic that easily, so you really, so Taunt Skarmory helps a lot, uh, helps uh, open up Tyranitar a lot as well. Um, Aerodactyl, this mod absolutely cannot break through Milotic unless it flinches, uh, rocks, uh, unless it flinches Rock Slide a million times, which is very unlikely to happen. This guy also sucks versus Claydol, so then you obviously open up Aer Aerodactyl a ton with Taunt and Toxic. Salamence, Salamence, um, 
Uh, Aerodactyl and Tyrants are also like all of these guys that in general pair really well with spikes. So Taunt Scarm provides spikes. Taunt Scarm provides Taunt and Toxic to whittle down their uh, checks, right? So you'll see just so much overlapping offense one on another, which is really great. Um, Salamence, all, all mixed attackers. You can also see mixed. Um, you'll see mixed. Tarantarm. All mixed attackers are walled by Milotic, like, because Milotic is just so bulky and mixed coverage is kind of weak, especially because it's not stab. So, um, Skarmory's spikes help make these weaker attacks sting harder, and then it also shuts down Milotic, which is the number one mixed attacker wall, so that's really great. Um, Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos is good at, um, Zapdos pairs really well with Skarmory's spikes because with a baton pass, then you can pivot into your own uh, breakers. Um, like, Blissey wall Zapdos, but if you roar out the Blissey, then it takes more spikes damage, and if Blissey comes in on Skarmory to try and heal off the damage, because it assumes Skarmory is passive, and, um, it, if it's, they assume Skarmory is passive, then you can, um, taunt them on their attempted, uh, soft boil, and then they're really, really stuck. You can also baton pass out into a physical attacker like Tyranitar in order to pressure um, Blissey the same way. Um, and then in general, uh, Zapdos is just a super strong Pokemon. And then with Spikes plus its um, th Thunderbolt and a choice of hidden power, it just tears through some teams. Um, Zapdos pairs really well with Skarmory versus Blissey because, like I said, Spikes help out. But also, Zapdos is really strong. Like even like especially with Modest, T Bolt stings Blissey. But obviously, Blissey can heal up with Soft Boiled. But with Taunt and Spikes, and um, yeah, with Taunt and Spikes, then you can really limit how many times Blissey can like hard switch in on Zapdos, especially if you have Roar, which is really great. Um, because of how frail uh, Taunt Skarmory is, you really want to Gengar on these kinds of teams. Gengar is naturally a really great spikes abuser because it's really fast and has really good coverage. Gengar also blocks rapid spin, so you um, even if your Skarmory dies, then you can still keep up spikes uh, because you block rapid spin. Um, Gengar also helps, it, running Wisp plus Taunt helps so much versus uh, defensive teams because not only do you have Toxic Taunt on Skarmory, but you have Will-O-Wisp Taunt on Gengar. So you just overwhelm all of these Pokemon that are reliant on clearing out status with either Natural Cure or Refresh, and then you prevent them from not only refreshing, but you prevent them from healing, and you force them to switch out and take even more status and sand damage and spikes damage over time. So Gengar plus Taunt Skarm form like an insane stall crushing duo together. You can also run offensive um, Gengar, which is it, which is a really good spikes abuser, obviously. But um, I really like this. Um, I really like Taunt Whiskar um, because uh, it just crushes so much uh, fat stuff. And also. Um, on a more offensive team, I think the ability to take uh, things like a S Dragon Dance Salamence Hidden Power Flying is really beneficial, um, because your Skarmory might get uh, trapped by a Magneton, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think this set is really good. Starmie, uh, has a really great def Starmie has a really great defensive synergy with um, Skarmory, because Scar uh, Water Steel is just a really great defensive duo, because... Um, Skarmie is threatened out by fire moves, and then Skarmie can take those fire moves. Skarmie doesn't like taking uh, big physical attacks, uh, Skarmie can take those. Um, Skarmie itself is a really good spikes abuser because it's really fast and has, you know, bolt beam coverage plus stab hydro pump. Skarmie, um, what is it? Starmie can often get off one to two rapid spins in a game with the uh, offensive Starmie. Uh, but the issue with offensive Starmie is that it's really frail and has difficulty actually finding opportunities to rapid spin, so you can't consistently rely on it to remove hazards for you. Um, which is why Taunt Skarmory is a, an amazing partner for this Starmie, because with Taunt in front of opposing Skarmory, then you deny them from getting up spikes in the first place, so you limit the amount- you reduce the amount of time Starmie actually has to rapid spin away hazards, which is amazing, because you, you don't have a lot of spin opportunities in the first place. Um, yeah. Um, Celebi synergizes really well on these kinds of Skarmory teams, because you want some way to switch into moves like Zapdos Thunderbolt and uh, Suicune Hydro Pump, but um, you, you don't really want to run Blissey on these kinds of teams because Blissey fits better on bulkier teams with Rapid Spin and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of running Taunt Skarmory, right? Because if you're just going to run a spinner anyway, just run Standard Skarmory, you know? Um, so Celebi works better on offensive teams as a special pivot. Um, with Leech Seed plus Spikes, you really stick it to um, a lot of Pokemon because it's really hard to switch into Leech Seeds since only Grass types can do that. And then Giga Drain Fire Psychic, just really good coverage. Uh, Hidden Power Fire also helps out versus uh, beating down opposing Skarmory. Um, and yeah, just really good Spikes abuser switches into special uh, sp switches into special moves like Zapdos Thunderbolt, which 
offense can really struggle to do. And yeah, that's Celebi. Um, Celebi also acts as a um, status absorber, which is really good for these offense teams because it's hard to switch into like Gengar Will-O-Wisp and things like that. Swamp or Toxic. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, um, t a lot of these offense teams also struggle to switch into Swampert because of, you know, Ice Beam... Yeah, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, Earthquake coverage is really difficult to switch into. Like, if you look at a lot of the previous guys, right, like, nothing here can really switch into all three of those moves, so Celebi is really good for that. Um, because even if you get hit by Ice Beam on the switch, you can just threaten them out with Giga Drain and then heal with Leech Seed, stuff like that. In general, um, keeping spikes off the field is really beneficial for all three of these, like, special checks, offensive special checks. Um, I think generally Celebi is the best one, but you can probably find some specific cases where Lantern or Reggie Ice are really good. But generally, these guys all share the same flaw of, like, they don't have reliable recovery. I mean, you can run Recover Celebi, but it's like, this the set Leech 3 attack uh, works so well on Spike's offense, so I really love this set. But you can run Recover Celebi if you want. Um, but with, uh, by minimizing the amount of time spikes go up, this set has so much more longevity, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, all three of these guys are affected by spikes, and these two often, yeah, Lantern Reggie Ice will have no recovery, so you want, you really want spikes gone for these guys. Um, and then you have your two offensive rock resists here. You can also fit on like a Calm Mind Jiraji here, potentially. Calm Mind Jiraji benefits a lot from having um, Blissey worn down by Taunt and Toxic as well. But generally, these two are the ones you'll see together. Um, Swamp or Metagross, because you'll be running almost no bulk investment on them, um, then you really want to keep spikes off, um, because what limited um, physical bulk they have will be severely cut into by spikes. Um, what is it? These guys are also walled really hard by uh, Milotic, so then you taunt and toxic the Milotic down, and then it just opens these guys up so much more. Um, then you can save your explosion for something else, like... Um, I don't know, like a Suicune or something, right? Um, and then Swampert, obviously, uh, Focus Punch destroys- Focus Punch plus the Earthquake destroys Blissey with 28 attack EVs, and then um, you don't have to worry about spikes coming in, so then you're automatically healing with leftovers, and it's really great. Um, yeah, so that's Taunt Skarmory. It works really well on offense, you really want Gengar, you really want uh, Spikes Abusers. Um, Taunt Skarmory is amazing at shutting down Milotic, which opens up so many of these Pokemon. Um, and that's the synergy between Taunt Skarmory and offensive teams, and taunt, how Taunt Skarmory shuts down defense. Um, I hope this video was helpful, and um, I hope to see a lot more Taunt Skarmory, because I think the set is just so cool for offense. Like, even in a lot of like high-level tournament games, I still see, like, you know, the standard Skarmory with, like, Protect, Toxic, Roar, um, Protect, Toxic, Roar, Drill, Peck, Spikes, you know? Um, and like that set's good obviously it's the standard for a reason it's super good but like i think taunt just has so much potential and i really want to see this explored a lot more um yeah thank you for watching